Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at side chaining in Cubase 10. So if you don't know, side chaining is normally used to refer to side chain compression where you use the sound from one track to control the amount of compression on another track. Most typically it's in the way that we've got here where you've got a kick drum which is then controlling the compression on a pad track. So that's what we'll end up with here. If you don't know the sound, you'll definitely have heard it before and you'll know what we're talking about by the end of this. So here's the pad, just a fairly generic pad sound, etc. And then here's our kick drum. Again, nothing particularly interesting, but just a bass drum every beat. So what we're going to use is the VST3 compressor. So if you're not sure about the setup of this, I'll just run you through it. So we've got the pad track here and as an insert, we're going to have a compressor. And here, what you would do is turn the side chain on. So as soon as you do that, this compressor is no longer controlled by this track. It's controlled by whatever we send to it, which in this case is going to be our side chain kick track called SC kick here. Now, in the old way of things, you'd have to go and find that track, which if you've got 100 tracks can be a bit of a pain. Uh, then you would need to go down to send in the inspector and then set up a send to that and turn it on and so on. That isn't the case anymore. You can do it directly from the effect that you're using the side chaining on. And all you do is click this little triangle here and then you click add side chain input. So once we click that, any of the tracks which are suitable, so that'd be audio tracks, instrument tracks and group tracks uh, and effects tracks I think possibly, will be available here. So anything that can send audio to this will be available and then we'll click SC kick. And that's it, it's done. So we don't have to go and find the track or change the inspector, etc. And we're ready to go. So now that's set up. And once we set these settings suitably, so fairly high ratio, and we'll lower the threshold so we get a real effect. So there you can hear and see it doing its thing. Now, this doesn't do anything particularly new. So if we look at the sends here, we can see actually all it's done is set up a send so in the next available send slot it sends one up so we look there we can see that if we change the level here you can see it's changing on the left hand side of the screen if i turn it to pre we'll see on the left hand side in the inspector that becomes pre etc it isn't doing anything new if you've already used eight sends on the track that you're trying to use you won't see it appear in the add side chain input uh, window so it doesn't do anything new, it doesn't give you any extra sends or anything like that. It's just a shortcut for a task which people do really, really often. So nothing amazingly new happening here. Now, in case you don't know, there's a couple of useful things to do with this. So one of them is often you don't want this kick to be heard in an arrangement. So you might well have a kick which goes all the way through, but the actual kick in your piece may well stop at a certain point, you know, breakdown or whatever, but the pad would still need to be sidechained. So to do that, you would put it on pre here. So even when we turn this down, we still get the pumping effect. And I'll show you what I mean. So there it is with it. But as I turn this down, we're still getting that pumping. So that will work fine. And the, the sidechain kick track won't be heard in the piece. But there's another issue with that is if you then solo the pad, you then lose that compression effect. I won't do it too much because it's quite loud. And that's because this is being muted. Now, you can get around that. You can see there the tooltip. So out click, out control click, sorry, will stop that from being soloed. So that's solo defeat. So this will always play. But because it's turned down here, you won't hear it. But that means that even if we solo this, we still get that effect. Those two things have been the case in Cubase for a long time. They've been really useful. But... So the new setup really is just about workflow improvement. It doesn't give you anything new or anything that you couldn't do previously. But it will save you a fair bit of time setting those up. So that's sidechaining Cubase 10. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out my book, The Complete Guide to Music Technology Using Cubase 10. It provides you with a thorough grounding in all aspects of using Cubase, music technology and music theory. Follow the link for more information and to order a copy today. Thanks for watching.